Yup, what's good, original crew, man? We're back, baby. We got a new Tyler video. Inside Florida's insane 250 million. You're a cop city. $250 million a year. Cop City. That's a lot. That's a lot of taxpayer money. Much, yeah. But, well, how, crime rate is going up. But also, too many, so much overtime is going out for cops, though. Let's be real. A lot of them getting overpaid. But is it overpaid or underpaid for the job they have to do? Because you keep bringing drugs or keep or uh, the drug uses is increasing, gang and criminal violence is is, is rising. Y'all see what's going on in Colorado? Uh, they need to be more, they need to enforce things way more. I feel like you know. Yeah. But hey, that's just my personal opinion, man. Hey, it's a lot of stuff that needs to be handled. It's yeah. not being handled, man. Facts, facts. But hey, with that being said, before we get into it. Make sure you check out the links in the description box. Down below. You already know where to go. If you want to first part, you got to do a check out down below. Also, if you enjoyed today's visuals. Knock it in with a thumbs up. Man, and I'm one of those. Lock them up. I don't care, bro. <laughs> if you, like, my thing is, you choose to do it. You choosing to go down with the consequences of, like, like I told my mom earlier, having a conversation. I said, life is all about uh, cause and effect. You learn about cause and effect early on in life, right? Yeah. What the choices you make is the cause. You got to deal with the effects afterwards. Whether sure. it be a, a grave or jail cell, whatever you know you choose to do, that was your choice. That is true. When you try, when you choose to say to get into the inner drug game, come on now, common sense. You should already know what comes behind this. When you try, uh, decide to, I'm a game bam, I'm gonna shoot at this person, you know what choices come with it. You know what I'm saying? Just have an insurance policy or have some money saved up so you can put on your own books and quick call them, call them home and tell them people to put money on your books, man. Mm -hmm. When you tell you go do that. That's true, though. But let's go. Let's hop into it, y'all. Let's check it out. Let's see what it's about. If you deal fentanyl and it results in someone dying, I'm going to charge you with homicide. In Lee County, Florida, mm. you deal poison, we're hunting you down. Oh, my God. All of these been fentanyl, 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 fentanyl. Inside, we've got 254 pills contained in wow. two bags here. This is Sheriff Marcino, the most OP sheriff in all of Florida, using social media to intimidate criminals from committing crimes and to let the good people of Lee County, Florida know. Now, I ain't gonna lie, this ain't where my taxpayer money go to, but I ain't if Can my taxpayer money go to Florida? I don't even know how they really go. But uh, when you're paying taxes and stuff, it goes to the federal and they disperse it. But my my money ain't going for y'all to be, you know what I'm saying, showboating and all that. You looking like you making more money than I am. <laughs> like, come on now. Like, do the, like do, the, do your job. You ain't got to be flashy with it. You ain't got to be, a, we on social media with y'all. You ain't got to do all that. Yeah. So the cops have their back. We're bringing on the heat and cleaning the streets. Welcome to Operation Summer Sizzle. After visiting countless soft on crime cities, plagued with cops who have their hands tied, and DAs who let criminals out the next day, what does a county that spends $250 million per year look like, and does it work? A defenseless dog had its mouth duct taped closed, its paws duct taped together. And this oxygen stealer was a person of interest, but if I could, I would duct tape his mouth shut and his legs together. First door, Lee County, many more to come. So I met up with Sheriff Marcino himself to figure out why they spend so much money, where it goes, and if it keeps people more safe. Oh, this is your office. We this will is sick. Hell no. Nah. And this is what I mean with low key y'all y'all wasting taxpayer money. This is a part of the two hundred and fifty million dollars, bro. To have some steady steady no, y'all y'all don't need that. You know what I'm saying? And how much money he making a year? A quarter, probably a quarter of a meal? Like what the fuck he need? You know? I'm fire you. Oh, look at this. We will have law and order. That's your yes, mantra. We will. That's right. That's seemingly uh, a rare mantra these days. Now, why is this important? 
the Marcino Mansion right here. I don't want to have to call people to get what's going on. So as you walk over, first and foremost, okay, calls for service. Today we're up to 972 calls. Yesterday, 1689. This week, 4289. Oh, this this month, 50,284. This year, 261,879 calls. Okay. You can see we're running. We're running hard. Yeah. But but now we come over here. It shows all the precincts, fourth precinct, fifth precinct, seventh precinct. 300 plus cameras in Department of Transportation. Oh, I know what's going on right now, any place in this county. Aviation, if they're up, whoever's working, I can click on their camera right now and I can watch their interaction. Can I see it? Live Google. This is a big, big deal. And I'm what do you mean live you. Google? So I'm gonna show you right now. I can tell you where everybody is, what they're doing. And then I can also bring up you know, any intersection I want in the county. Okay. Right now. So you're bringing up live CCTV cameras right now? I'm bringing up live cameras. Wow. You have eyes and ears everywhere. Everywhere. Okay. But I can go to any intersection and pull it up right now. So if there's a crash, if someone says we're in a pursuit, whatever it might be, it shows me right now. Plus, it shows me every single person working. The stars are where my deputies are. It tells me what they're doing, what they're on, what calls for service. It's important for me to have my finger on the pulse constantly. It's a traffic stop right here. So this is <laughs> this is Deputy Austin, and right now I can see his body worn camera. So it's as if we're That's on insane. scene. We got this county locked down. This can't be cheap, but I imagine crime isn't cheap either. Does this save money overall by preventing people from doing crazy so stuff? A couple things, right? Yeah. First, what's the cost of life? Is it a dollar? Is it three million dollars? What's the cost of a life? For me, there's no. It sounds scamish to to me. When people be saying that, what's the cost of life? There's like, it really, like, low key, it'd be like, it's really not, it should, it doesn't have to cost this much, but this is the amount of money we're going to use. You know, you get what I mean? It's like, we don't, we don't need 250 million to do it, do the job, but we want to use that money to do the job. So we use that, what's the cost of a life? You know? Yeah, I get what you're saying, but I guess I'm a little, um, I don't need all that though, bro. I mean, yeah, that's, but that's OD. like I don't know, like the exact, like I understand, like the title, or whatever. If that's it, what it costs, yeah, it's a lot. Like looking, it's a lot. But the, is it beneficial? Is it actually helping? Is it cutting down on things? Like I would like to know that stuff. Like ever since y'all done up the up the ante of everything. How what is the crime rate? Yeah, has that's it, has what I'm it, saying. Like, I'm what's the has it decreased? Has, like, yeah, I need to know the statistics. Like, yeah. I need to know that stuff. Like, give me that information. And if it's about the same, then cut half, cut all of it out. Yeah, drop. We can we can spend that. Two, we can spend at least two hundred million. Because you know what's going else. on everywhere. It's not. It's still not stopping nothing. It's not stopping. So it from I would happening. like to know, like, yeah, I yeah. need to know the statistics. Because we can put two hundred million to into the community somewhere else. Because yeah. two hundred and fifty million is a lot. No cost to protect okay. lives. Secondly, utilizing grants, utilizing drug money, forfeiture money, and plus utilizing our general fund and our budget. When you take drugs and guns off the streets, the crime rate goes down and the quality of life goes up. And Lee County is really, I mean, leading the way. In fact, Sheriff Marcino claims that in 2020, when he was elected sheriff, he took Lee County from the sixth most unsafe city in America to the third safest county in the nation when it comes to violent crime. While I can neither confirm nor deny that statistic, here's a graph of the violent crime in Lee County since 2020. At the very least, increased police presence with more boots on the ground, and Sheriff Marcino's social media conquest has seemed to communicate to criminals that if you commit a crime in Lee County, they will find and they will arrest you, which should deter them from acting a fool and committing crimes in Lee County. In addition to overall presence in the community, Lee County is taking innovative measures when it comes to incorporating new technology like this robot dog, Robbie. This thing is amazing. It's replacing what could be a police officer going into the scene. Uh, his name is Robbie in our agency, Robbie the Robot Dog. And uh, we use Robbie for a lot of different scenarios um, through our, our agency. This thing looks like it Robbie could hunt me down slow. and murder me. This, this dog is fun. This dog is a Boston Dynamics <laughs> dog. There's over 10 cameras on this dog. There's a PTZ camera on top with a thermal. There's two-way mic so we can talk Oh, and so we can, can negotiate with, with uh, people holding hostages or... Yes, sir. Yeah. This dog can open doors. It can go... But what if I decide to shoot at it and I got like some... Well, boom! You know what I'm saying? Maybe it's like protected against some things or mm -hmm. something. Upstairs, you know, provides that real-time information with all those cameras so we can clear residents. It's really worked. And then 
go back to the command post and say, okay, it is safe for, for us to go in, or we kind of know what we're working with when we go inside that structure. So this is our indoor drone. And what we use, we use that in conjunction with Robbie. <laughs> so as the Robbie's ultimate tag team walking inside of a house, the drone is right over top of it. So we can make sure Robbie's <laughs> in a safe environment wow. as well. Yeah. Robbie is replacing what would be a police officer going into a, a line of fire potentially? Correct. Okay. And the drone can say there's an obstacle. The drone can go obviously over that obstacle through a window up a second story if we need to get there fast. And that's what we use that drone for. So this drone's gonna be up at 400 feet. So we're gonna have a much wider angle and, and picture to provide that information to not only our boots on the ground, to our real-time intelligence center inside of our headquarters. Okay. We're gonna be on the scene for a long period of time or just a response. We're gonna utilize this drone response vehicle. Um, inside here, we have four monitors. All the drones we deploy in our agency, we're able to live stream into this this command post you want. We'll see real time what's going on, maps of what's going on, air traffic, and then we'll be able to live stream the dog and the RC car. That thing, how fast can that thing go? Well, this is just a battery. Oh, I'm dumb. Also, I uploaded an extended version of this video to my Patreon weeks ago, along with uncensored early access to all my videos before they go up on YouTube and exclusive DLC content that YouTube won't let me upload. If you want to support our boots on the ground, independent journalism that is not bought and paid for by corporate interests, go subscribe at patreon.com slash Tyler Oliveira for less than five bucks a month. I just uploaded the video of me getting arrested and taken to jail exclusively on my Patreon for allegedly committing a crime. I believe I may get arrested right now. Wait, actually? Yeah. Wait, for what? Put your hands right back. No, wait! I asked him about the Rainy Street Killer and uh... About the what? The Rainy Street Killer. Killer? Thank you for your support and back to Florida. Here you go. Oh my God. This is amazing. I mean, it's quick enough. Let's say I had someone, I'm holding them hostage. What can this dog do? It's going to come into the scene and give me eyes and ears? It's going to give me eyes and ears, exactly. So we kind of know what we're working with okay, and what resources we need to bring enough. into that environment. How much does dog cost? A lot. <laughs> you know, where a lot of these, it's used from forfeiture funds. So bad money turned oh. good. So not the taxpayers, it's the actual criminals who bought this mm. Smart. So this is the gripper. He's going to open it up. Could it? You like that? Is that a little nah, bit go get, a, get that money back to the community. <laughs> no, <just laughs> well, technically, you are giving it back to the community. That is. This is that is. It's just not the way that, you know. No, nah, I'm just saying somebody but, else would be something. That was somebody else in the comments. Would say, because, yeah. uh, go, Y'all can give that money to the homeless. Go feed the homeless or something. They might do. You know, there's plenty of drug, uh, drug dealers and stuff that get caught with tons of money all the time. Like this uh dope boy from my town, he got caught with three hundred thousand mm -hmm. stashed in the wall. Mm. So what they gonna do with three hundred thousand? You know? Yeah. Clasp someone's hand, for instance, and take them into custody? Yeah, that's true. Um, there was nobody there. <laughs> it's just <crap> my arm. <laughs> oh. What just happened? That's him talking. But to all the baddies out there. The technology is getting pretty insane right now. <laughs> it it seems like no chance to be a career criminal in the next 20 years. No, not at all. So we have a 360 degree angle. If we want to see what's going on in the back of it, we you can, as mind. well as in okay, complete darkness to see if um, body heat of a, a subject. So this thing can operate in the night. It can. Okay. So even if you try to hide in complete darkness, <laughs> Robbie will find you. Oh, oh man, look at this. We've got the awning, we've got the big screen. So on a on a scene where we're at an area for a long period of time, this is almost our command post where everybody's seeing what's going on inside the house or in the air. This is just a nice feature. In what scenario are you guys out here watching this happen play out? Yeah, recently we had a bank robbery and we mm. had multiple units from different agencies as well. They wanted to see what was going on. You know, having this drone response vehicle, the DRV. This is our Black Hornet. <laughs> Stealth drone. What? It's a little helicopter and it fits in the palm of your hand. We are the first law enforcement agency. keep buying all these damn toys. <laughs> this is typically for military purposes, okay. but now they opened it up to law enforcement. And we'll utilize this if we need to be more stealth mode, just to get into very small spaces, um, like I mentioned, in the attic or over a rooftop to see what's, what's going on on top of the roof. Um, so this can maneuver in very, very tight spaces where the bigger drones cannot, so. Is there a world where they could just explode at some point and just be used as like mobile detonation units? <laughs> it's like, look at that little antenna. 
It's a great observation. This thing is extremely quiet right now. A little tablet in hand. This looks like a delicate procedure right now. Should I push him? Yeah. You bad dog. Don't poop on the floor. Oh, you bad dog. Don't sh on the ground, you piece of crap dog. You're a bad dog. You're a bad Tyler, dog. Tyler, you know how to flip a dog. You're a bad dog. She left you at the pound. All right, yeah, oh it's resilient. Do we think these dogs are going to get faster, stronger? As time advances, the, the technology is just getting better and better. So they are getting faster. They're getting more durable. Um, this one, you know, you can move it left hey. and right, and it's not going to fall over. It kind of mm. corrects itself. That's Robbie. This dog will catch you if you're acting like a villain. Don't try acting like a thug in Lee County, as Sheriff would say. Yet, as someone who just got arrested and taken to jail for jaywalking and asking too many questions about a serial killer in Austin, Texas, insane tech like these tiny, nimble drones and robot dogs beg the question of how powerful the police should be and if all law enforcement can wield this power properly, while at the same time acknowledging the upside of a world where criminals are less likely to commit crimes and more likely to get caught if they do. I met back up with Sheriff Marcino to understand his vision for policing the future and why he thinks this emphasis on technology is a massive benefit to the residents of Lee County. Sheriff, what are we going to see today? This is headquarters, you know what? And this is an important day for us. First of all, great residents in Lee County. We love it. We have law and order, unlike other places. People come here for a reason, not just palm trees and beaches. Proud to say our, our violent crime is down and crime rate is down the lowest it's ever been. And you know what? We're not apologizing for keeping people safe. Okay, sure. Okay. What are some strategies you're using yeah. to keep Lee County safe out here? Working smarter and harder. Okay. Utilizing the latest and greatest technology. By the way, while we're talking here, yeah. technology is going to change, right? Sure. Staying up to date with it. Making certain that our residents know that we have all the tools, worst case scenario to best case scenario, to keep them safe. And people understand, you commit a crime in Lee County, we will find you using the latest and mm, greatest okay. technology, and we will hunt you down and you would go to jail and be charged according. So I was looking up Lee County, seeing exactly where it's South Florida. But it's on the other side of Miami, South Florida, though. But it's uh, Fort Myers. Okay. Did you know? Did you know that? Mm -hmm. the cap. Stop the cap. <laughs> That's why people come to Florida. Why do they leave my hometown in New York? I'm a New Yorker. You can hear from the accent. They leave because there's no law and order. People complain and they attack me, right? Oh, a Republican sheriff. I'm the sheriff of the people, okay. okay? It doesn't matter what age, ethnicity, who you are, where you come from. When you call 911, we don't say, okay, sir, are you a Republican? Are you white, Italian, African-American, Asian? No, we don't say any of that. We say, ma'am or sir, what's your problem? I'm the sheriff of the people. Sheriff, if I want to deal some fentanyl to some people under a bridge, what would you and your deputies do to me? If you deal in Lee County, Florida, you know, are you man. are 100 percent going to be hunted down you're going to be charged to the fullest extent of the law and i'm taking everything from you cars mm. houses money anything you have is going to be a forfeiture also the most important thing is if you deal fentanyl and it results in someone dying okay d hit the drug homicide investigations team i'm going to charge you with homicide in lee county florida you deal poison we're hunting you down I can mm. show you right now what plane is flying over. Speed, altitude, direction of travel, where they're going. Okay, everything right here is, the flight comes up, it tells you everything. It tells you what the plane is, where it's going. And as the U.S. has had more school shootings than all other major industrialized nations combined, Sheriff Marcino believes his high-tech surveillance and increased police presence on campus can help prevent them. Mm. Every school is being monitored as we speak. So let's say a school shooter walks into a school right now. Could you guys prevent that and see it before it even happens? The cameras are there. If a shooter walks in, okay, I can tell you right now, our school resource officers, we have one in every school. We have two in high schools, and if they have a capacity of 1,500 kids or more, two SROs. If someone thinks they're gonna go into our schools and kill our children or kill our teachers, we will meet them outside and we will kill them immediately. We're not waiting. We're not waiting one second. And again, people will attack me on that. From here, this works on our analysts are amazing here. They work simultaneously. Let me say this. Now, I, I do know people complain about the uh, presence of a police officer in school. Mm -hmm. Do you feel like, hold on, first off, first question. In your high school, did y'all have police officer no. on duty? Y'all yeah. didn't. So we didn't have a police officer, nor did we have metal detectors. So I can say, even starting in the seventh grade, that's when we first had the first uh, school that I had a police officer in, mm -hmm. all the way up until high school, mm -hmm. graduate high school, 
had police officers. I think in high school at one point we had two officers. You know what I'm saying? We had multiple buildings. So one police, one building, one police, the other building. The other building, it was an honors building. Mm -hmm. They ain't police the honors building. So it was just main building and the other building. Mm -hmm. But uh, po but police presence, I, I went to the school where it was police presence. I went to the school where there were searches all the time. Mm -hmm. Like literally, we on a bus, we pull up. You know when it's search day. We, hey, hey, yo, search day. People poking holes in the... uh. And the bus seats. And the bus seats putting their stuff in the in the seats because it's gonna get confiscated at the, so I remember I had the cell phone on me. I'm like, damn, can't get caught with my cell phone, put my cell phone in the seat and I get it at the end of the at the end of the day. They they didn't search the buses. They just literally you go in, you stand in line, they have two full lines rows of police officers and uh teachers. Searching every student that comes in the building. Mm -hmm. You literally, you go down the line. They take everything out your book bag. They pass you down. You walk. You get metal detector one. I've been to alternative school. I've been almost well. In alternative school. You get you take your shoes out. They dust your shoes out. They pass you down. They search everything. They take your books. They shake them out. You know what I'm saying? I've, I've been searched like that before. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I've been searched. First time I ever got individual search. I was in the seventh grade. I was in the uh, gym and they came, they uh, searched my locker. They were looking for a gun to this day. I can't tell you where to go get a gun off the street. I, so when I was 13 years old, they said, hey, come here. I'm like, what? Pat me down. Where your locker at? Mm -hmm. Went through my locker, went through all my clothes. I'm like, the fuck? And then they never told me what they were searching for. So I went home and told my mom, okay, I searched today. So my mom went... My mom pissed off. She like, what the? F and I didn't get a call. So then she she went up to the school the next day. She said, "Why y'all search my?" Oh, uh, we we heard he had a phone on him. I didn't I didn't even have a phone at that time. Yeah. So it was like I was like I had a phone on me. I don't even got a cell phone. And then uh, after that, I ended up getting a cell phone. But I had got word back. This dude had uh, told uh, snitched on me and said I had a uh, had a gun on me. Mm -hmm. And I was like, bro, I don't even know where to go. So, so with all of that. But with all of that, my question is, do you feel as though there does need to be a presence of police officers on school campuses? Before I answer that, I was about to actually ask you a question. With all of that you just told me, how did you feel having the police presence on, camp on campus? Honestly, I say this, honestly, because... When I was in the fifth grade, that's when I first started. Uh, that was the first school I went to where we had security camera footage. And so we started calling that the jail. Like, by the time you go to fifth grade, you're like, all right, we this, we're going to the jail school because they got security cameras all over the place watching and monitoring. Mm -hmm. But it wasn't police presence. So by the time I went to junior high, they had cameras all over the place and police officer. I didn't feel no type of way. I was just like, all right, this is. Yeah, we had cameras, but. Not I got used to system. like it was just like all right, you, you already know that every step you yeah. go up it gets stricter and stricter. So you just like all right, cool, whatever. But I mean, I guess personally, are are you asking me did I feel safer or yeah? Like how did you feel? Did it make you uncomfortable? Did you feel safe? Uncomfortable? It, nah, like... it just it literally felt like the norm. Because honestly, I don't think that I can answer that question because I never experienced it. Mm. So because like you know in college having like like. That's security. security. That's different. different than like having it like in middle school and high school because that that's where we hear you know a lot of things that are going on. Like most of like the shootings and stuff that have happened have been like on like those type of you know high school, middle school, whatever. But now it's starting to affect elementary school and countries. elementary because we and yeah. on that end there has been a lot of elementary school shootings. Mm -hmm. So with that being said. Do I feel like there should be... Because, okay, high school, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. People start doing crimes. People start selling dope, whatever. You know what I'm saying? That's where I really found out who the, who the dope boys in the school. That's where I first started seeing ecstasy. I knew what weed was, but I knew who the, the weed dealers and stuff was. People smoking in the bathrooms and stuff like that. Even though we still had police presence, stuff was still going on. We had a stabbing in my school. I, one of my homeboys stabbed this dude... Uh, in school, so yeah. things still happen even though you got a police on campus. Yeah, but honestly, was I creeped out or weirded out about it? 
No. Yeah. Uh, do I feel like there should have been more presence? Possibly. Because okay. I've seen I've seen the police in action there, and I just was like, uh, ain't nobody afraid of the police officer there. Yeah. Like, uh, look, look. Solved. Yeah, but to, to answer your question, I really can't because I never experienced it before. But I do know that some people do have to have issues with it, uh, with you know, police presence being on camp on camp, especially like with the younger kids, the younger you know age groups. Um, I think it should be though, it, even it, in the elementary, at least one. But and then also and also I don't have kids so I don't I don't really know how like that will feel as a parent to even you know but but I I was thinking I was like you can still have it but I don't know if it's because you don't want your kids to see like certain things like the like the weapon on the hip or things of that nature like I don't know like like what it actually is but maybe like sitting like out like I don't know like so I, I think that there should be. But also, I have seen, like, because I get the stuff to my phone with them, yeah. like, doing all the voting and stuff for it, like, here where we at. But. So, let me let me interject real quick, also. Go ahead. It can, like, also, by having uh, police presence on campuses, also gets the kids are familiar with the police mm-hmm. and honestly allow them to start building a more positive relationship mm-hmm. with police officers. So, as they get older... They don't look at the police officers as a threat or yeah, yeah, yeah. look at them in a negative manner. Yeah. But the po- police officers in the in the school systems do have a more positive impact in mm-hmm. the schools. It can also build a better rapport in a community yeah, yeah. from the kids' standpoint. So you can be helping the new generation as you get older if the police officers are there and making a positive impact yeah. on the youth. Yeah. Personally, I'm not opposed to it, but some people that... I have seen that kind of are, you know, yeah. against it. I would like to just know why. You know, I like to hear both sides. Yeah, I kind of yeah, yeah. open my mind like, okay, I see where you're coming from and I get where you're coming from. But I'm not opposed to it. I've never experienced it, but I can only see the positive in it. But I, I don't know. I, I, Sorry, think, I think it should be due to uh, actions that has happened. Mm-hmm. If you if you're in a if you're in a, a county or a community with a school system, y'all have it in the high school or mm-hmm. even in a junior high, I think you should have it at every grade level, every mm-hmm. school uh, level. Yeah, I think it should be in the me- middle school. I think it should there should be some type of security presence. At what level? That's up to them to decide. But there should be some kind of security presence for the safety because. Mm-hmm. People are getting out of hand Mm -hmm. and you need to be able to some kind of way form some kind of control and build some type of positive rapport Mm -hmm. on the next generation of kids. But if they're going to be in the school, don't let them just sit there in the office and they only pop out when something going on. Tell them, hey, this is about also a positive impact. This is about showing presence. This is not about dominance, like showing dominance, but more of a presence that, hey, we're here to protect y'all. We're here to serve and protect like we're supposed to, not to be a threat, not to be, I'm the one in charge, you know? Me on that. From here, this works on our analysts are amazing here. They work simultaneously with STET, our school threat enforcement team. Whoa. Well, what does that mean? Well, that means that every threat that comes through, we get between five and 50 threats a week. Now, the vast majority of them do not rise to probable cause. Okay? True. But we don't wait one second. True. We look into every single threat. We look into the household, the parents. We look at everything. Are there firearms in that house? We need to make sure if someone says they're going to shoot a school up, well, if they have firearms at home, they have the ability possibly to do that. We also help them on the mental health counseling side. Okay. So we have mental health Good. counselors okay. that go out right now okay. instead in the okay. school threat enforcement team, and we're helping kids. Right now, we're watching over 550 kids. Okay. In real time in real time. If they made a threat, what it is, where they go to school, and then we're working with their parents and guardians to help them. The vast majority turn it around. If they do a threat and it reaches probable cause, we will arrest. We prefer not to, so education and awareness is number one, a last results enforcement. Okay. Proud to tell you, Lee County Sheriff's Office, number one in the state on how we protect our children, number one. Right now, just for school threats. This is the busiest unit in the entire agency. Okay. We get between five and 50 threats a week. That's a lot. What does that tell you? It tells me that society's gone the wrong direction, right? Years ago, people pushed each other in the playground, someone got a black eye, you put a stake on your eye, they were best friends. Today, we're getting real threats. 
we're going to shoot the school. We're going to kill this one. Weapons on school grounds. Well, where did they learn this, right? As you're responding to the call, you see, it tells you exactly where to go, what to do. You're going to hear one shooter, you know, black and white shirt on, you know, in the cafeteria, which is, you know, H6. You're going to know exactly where it is because remember, you might not know the location, J10, K9, K10, but you know the grid. And if someone is responding from a different area, they know the grid too. So anyone responding, we can stage EMS, fire all by grid. So it's, it's, it's a quick, immediate, almost foolproof program that gets us to that point to save lives. Okay. In addition to increased school monitoring, Sheriff Marcino has a zero tolerance approach to the presence of fentanyl, the leading cause of death for Americans 18 through 45. I've seen some big drug busts you guys have had. How common is that and what tactics are you guys using to take down these drug baddies? First and foremost, double the size of narcotics unit. And why is that? Not just because I ask, because we all know that people rob, kill, and steal for drugs. We also know that people overdose on drugs. So holding them accountable, the people that deal the poison, charge them with homicide. The DEA does a great job. We work close with them. Okay, you take the drug dealer off the street, you incarcerate them, when they come out, a lot of the times they're doing the same thing again. But drug dealers talk more than you and I are talking right here. And they say, and we know through conversations, stay out of Lee County, Florida. Our men are everywhere. We're not playing games. And when you take drugs off the streets, especially big ones, you're saving lives. People aren't overdosing on them. Fentanyl kills. And it's coming right through our borders. We know that cartel members, terrorists, Drug dealers are coming through our borders. We can't control the world, but we are going to control Lee County. So drug dealers are not welcomed here? Not welcome. Matter of fact, the only place they are welcomed is jail. And we'll put them in jail. We'll gladly give them a matching pair of jumpsuits and slides, and they can go do their thing, and uh, they can stay at the Marcino Motel. Where do these drugs end up? Let me introduce you to the evidence chamber. So this is our drug room. Oh, it smells loud in here. <laughs> we have weed in here or what? We've got everything in here. Fentanyl, we always store in double bags, and we okay. seal it with tape, and it's stored in uh, containers as well. So we've got a lot of packaging in between us and the fentanyl. Okay. Uh, strong smell of weed in here. And you're not concerned going into this raw, no gloves? No, I'm not. I trust that we have everything labeled Whoa. properly. Suspected fentanyl. So Ooh, that's that's kind of scary. It's my heart racing a little bit. So inside we've got a bag of fentanyl contained in wow. two bags here. Now the person that packaged it, they should worry about the exposure. All of these bins. Look at this. Fentanyl, 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 fentanyl. Those stickers are scary. When we store everything in here. We've got over-the-counter Tylenol over-the-counter Sudafed. Okay. Because people use Sudafed to make methamphetamine. Do we have any meth in here? It's in here? What is this? Suspected fentanyl, suspected fentanyl, suspected fentanyl. Mm. This is the culmination of, these are all active cases right now. Do you guys dispose That's of the fentanyl crazy. after the case is resolved? We take it to an undisclosed location and it completely gets destroyed. It gets burned. Um, and then all of the, the particulate from the burning, the smoke and everything, that gets scrubbed. So nothing goes into the atmosphere. In this case in particular, this one is cocaine. Okay, a little pill. A little rock. Okay. This one's a little marijuana. Just a little, little joint. RJ, all right. And here's some fentanyl pills. Just imagine going to jail for that. Bro, it ain't worth it, bro. It bro, that ain't, little ain't joint. That them. little joint ain't bigger than this two pit. <laughs> it, was, it was about the size of this little two pit. Yeah, it's about the size of the two pit. Just imagine you finna go to jail, do some time. Over a little joint, bro. What's that little high worth it? Was Maybe it... it was multiple things, and they found that a lot. Man, long you ain't finna bust me for no little ass joint. No, that's what I'm saying. You better throw that, out. <laughs> bro. You can even if you catch me with other. Don't 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 charge me to the little joint. <laughs> Just throw that on the ground and stump it out, bro. Okay, some blues. So the, the thing about fentanyl is it comes in all different forms. We've sent some oh, marijuana smoke. off to the lab to be tested because we have to verify what it is. And they come back that it's got traces of fentanyl in it. Mm. How recent is that? It Damn. happens almost weekly that we send it off to the lab and we get it back. There's fentanyl everywhere. The dealer not, might That's not be selling crazy. it to you on purpose, but unbeknownst to them, it's there. And unbeknownst to yeah. you. And here in Lee yeah. County, if someone were to die due to that, they would go to jail for murder. Yes. Don't deal drugs. Not in Lee County. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Woo. Whoa, look at this. Look at all those pills. Can we can we see it? Yeah. This is all fentanyl? Wow, they look just like little mints. We're looking at a bag full of Altoid-like fentanyl pills. 
that look like the average mint you'd pop in your mouth. 254 pills right there. And the common mm. metric you see this touted often is this is enough to kill at least 254 people. Yeah. <laughs> Seriously. Scary stuff, man. Whoever handled these to get them into evidence, major balls, major respect. Two milligrams is a lethal dose of fentanyl. And these are There's 0.5 a, grams. There's a thousand milligrams per gram. And right here I have 300 grams. That's crazy. Has crime gone down since you've become sheriff? It has. Uh, you know, it was nothing for us to have three or four felony pursuits going on at one time. All right. Uh, I got to brag, and uh, I will tell you this. Not on me. I'm going to brag to the, the great residents of this county because you are so great. You support us. And that's the reason we're able to do our job. When you have a cohesive team with like-minded people that want safety, security, law, and order, and the Governor DeSantis, of course, stands behind law enforcement, gives us all the tools we need to do our job. He sets the tone at the highest level. That's why we have a great state. That's sure. why people are leaving California. They're leaving New York. They don't want people urinating and defecating in the public while people are walking to work. Poor people just trying to enjoy their day get punched in the face for no reason. Okay, well that doesn't happen here and it's not gonna happen here. And luckily for pets, Sheriff Marcino loves animals almost as much as he hates criminals. We protect animals to the fullest extent here. If someone makes an allegation of abuse or neglect, full force, the Animal Cruelty Task Force, detectives mm. assigned to just that, they like go they out don't. and if probable cause exists, we are- You were calling on they don't want you. <laughs> So. Arrest them. And most importantly, we have an abuse registry now. If they're convicted, again, thanks to our county commissioners, I wanted them to go on a registry. It's like a sexual predator oh. registry. They go on a registry for five years. They can't own an animal, and everybody knows who they are. I like that. And now I'm working with legislators to what? make that statewide. Oh. Let's put them out there and shame them and make certain they can't have another animal, you know, for five years. You so know, sure. what if I broke into your house when you're on vacation and moved in and presented a fake lease oh. to a sheriff out here, <clears throat> well, to a deputy? I can tell you this. We don't have those issues. And why? <laughs> tell me why. Because we're not going to tolerate them. My home is my sanctuary. Nobody is going to come. I do feel like they that's getting out of hand. The squatting oh, yeah. shit, bro, that is getting out of hand, bro. Yeah. Like lawmakers, like who even approved the... Now I do know it's, it's state to state. I think yeah. I think it's state to state, and each state differs yeah. with the squatting rights. But I like if you move into my place, most most places that that allow the squat rule. Basically, if you move in my place, you got an address that's to my spot. Like you put an address on some type of mail, and be like, mm -hmm. and it comes there. Now you deem as a resident. Uh, no, you, your name ain't on no lease. You should have have to have proper paperwork that you are on the lease. Yeah, sure. That's crazy. And if you're not on the Sorry. lease, they should be able to go in and, and remove you. Um, break into someone's house and claim what's not their property. You're out of there. We will. It be over before it starts. <laughs> Sheriff, I know you're a busy man. If there are any criminals out there plotting anything right now, what would you say to them? My message to the criminals is very safe, and, and it's absolutely 100% true. Don't come to Lee really County, Florida. Don't come to Florida. We have great sheriffs and law enforcement officers throughout the entire state, led by our great governor, Ron DeSantis. Ron DeSantis wants law and order. Our senators, our state attorneys everywhere want law and order. So if you want to live life and love life with sunshine and palm trees, if you come to the state of Florida, we love you. We love, we love everybody. Drug dealers, people that want to commit crime, have a good day. Don't come. And for any criminals trying to run and barricade themselves indoors, Lee County's explosives unit will find a way in. Oh. All right, imagine a crazed maniac is inside a building. He's holding five babies hostage. He says he's going to kill himself. Don't try this at home, y'all. The cops and SWAT need to get in ASAP. Bombs on the wall. They're getting in. In three, two, one. Oh, my God. Holy sh**. That caught me off guard. Damn, that was crazy. That was like fireworks. The bomb has blown off. The crazy maniac is shocked. He didn't expect the SWAT to come in, much less blow off the wall. He's spooked right now. His ears are ringing. His head's spinning. The dude has no clue. He just lost his left testicle because something flew straight into his chest. The kids are shockwaved on the ground. <laughs> the kids are deaf for life now.
<laughs> that was crazy. Look at how far this thing flew. Look at how far that thing flew. <laughs> That's crazy. Wow, that thing launched up. So is someone inside the crazed maniac who kidnapped the five babies. Is he disoriented? Yeah. Okay. Yep. It's a very good distraction technique as well as a hasty end. And then bop, 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 bop. Grab the kids, sure. get out. Yeah. If need be. If need be. All right. Good to know. There's a bomb for you. Lee County built different, man. They don't play around. That was awesome. All right. Number two. All right, your turn. Oh, hell yeah. All right. <laughs> We're doing another one. Fine. Should I take out so the safeties first? Make sure you watch. Yeah. You want me to watch just for like immersion purposes? Yeah, man. A man catches his wife having sex with another man. The man is now going to kill himself, the man, and his wife. He won't leave the building. He has a gun to her head. SWAT mm. team says, get down now. He says, no, I'm going to kill all of us. SWAT team, little does he know, the bomb's about to penetrate a hole in the wall for the SWAT and the cops to enter before he even realizes it. The safety's been released. The pin is gone. Ready? And in three, two, one. Oh my oh, God! That's... The man is half yep. dead. The SWAT team enters the building. <laughs> and the infidel are on the ground. Tyler having too much fun. <laughs> he is having a lot of fun. Tyler is Tyler is having. He's, he's painting a picture for you. Honey. Tyler wilding out, y'all. Yep. Falling. The husband's now dead. That was the father of his three kids. They're deaf. That's a small price to pay for their infidelity. Lee County <laughs> Police Department taking down, once again, another baddie. Lee County, man, they do not mess around. Do not kidnap someone. Good work, guys. That was uh, a beautiful explosion. You guys are masters at your craft. While the villains may be caught, with the dogs and babies rescued, you might be wondering what they do with all the remaining evidence left behind. We're here in the evidence room, and I'm here with... Lieutenant Pannoni. What do we have in here? We have over 140,000 items. Uh, basically, this is the, the county's evidence handling facility. We have everything I'm gonna get here, one drugs, guns, money, <laughs> um, wheelchairs, anything that's related to a criminal case, we're going to be storing it here in this building. We're talking bah, bah, bah. fentanyl, everything? Everything. Uh, we've got guns, we've got crossbows, we've got everything. Yeah. everything. Okay. And what is its purpose in here? Storage until the case goes to trial. Once the I case see. goes to court, we send the evidence to court and the prosecutors utilize that to help prove the case. And then we're able to dispose of it after the case has been resolved. Everything. As you can see, we got a wheelbarrow. So if I use that to ram into someone and kill them, that'd end up here? That would end up here. Even if you used it just to transport some stolen items, that's a, a fruit of a crime. So okay. we're going to take it. Um, we have things as small as a single piece of paper, whether it's a, a stolen check or a checkbook, all the way up to vehicles. We have cars stored on the other side of this room so that will go see. There's a trampoline all the way over there. There's a trampoline all the way over there, yeah. Cool. So the fishing poles are great because we take those when they're stolen. If we can't figure out who the owner is or the owner doesn't want it back, then we donate those to the sheriff's youth organization and they take the kids out fishing in the summer now that school's out. Money counter? Okay, I like that one. A spare tire off of a car. Okay. Uh, mm. Got a PS2 right there? Can I get that money counter? Beep. I just want it. <laughs> I get it? Okay. I'm dead ass, bro. I'm going to have to go to the police uh, station and be like, y'all got anything, anything in evidence y'all want to kill me? <laughs> Do I would. <laughs> <laughs> be like y'all got anything y'all want to give away evidence? Let me look through. Uh, hey, hey, I'm good for it. I'm, I'm, I'm shooting a YouTube video. <laughs> <laughs> Try to inform the community, man. That's it. <laughs> That's retro. All right. <laughs> Blood covered. It's got a biohazard sticker on Ooh. it. So Ooh, okay. man. We, I don't we want try that. to keep all the the bios contained. I don't need so that. I'm hanging out with some gangsters, if you will. And oftentimes they'll give me their gun to take a look at. I touch that. Am I running the risk of uh, maybe compromising myself legally? Every time yeah. you touch something, you leave a piece of yourself behind. So your DNA is being left behind. Your fingerprints are being left behind. Even by us walking through this room, we're constantly shedding dead skin. Yeah. And dead skin contains like DNA. This. Okay. So we have a guitar right here, some tactical bags, Michael Jordan bag, circular saws. Can I get the guitar? It's worth something. I'm just saying, bro. I'm, want everything I'm one of them. Like, can I get that? <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, it don't belong to nobody now. They, mm. they fucked up. They don't need it. I'm done. They don't need where they going. We got everything in the book out here. Everything one can imagine. Safes blown open. That's oh, kind of awesome. oh, never mind. I don't, We're coming into no the weapons room. Is that what this is? So, yeah. So this is our gun room. Whoa. Okay. We got swords too. 
<laughs> yeah, every cardboard box has one gun in it. Every blue bin that you see has multiple boxes and bags in it. How long did it take to procure all these weapons? Oh, huh. We have we have guns dating back to the 1970s in here. There's still open cases. Still open cases, yeah. Cold, cold case homicides. We destroy hundreds of guns every year because we don't want criminal enterprise guns to going back out on the street. Makes sense. Mm. So you people out here flexing that they are armed and they're not. A lot of people think- I mean, this is kind of a dead giveaway though, I guess, right? That might Maybe be a dead giveaway, but we legitimately have a gun in that room, oh. a real live functioning firearm okay. that has an orange tip painted on it. Because somebody thought, if I paint an orange tip on it, nobody's gonna know it's real. Okay, fair. So it's safe to assume anything could be a weapon, yes. obviously. This is a toy, it's plastic, it looks like a toy, but anybody can paint anything. Whoa. Okay, we got- Vehicles in here. Are these stolen from villains? What's going on? Let's see the Jag. F-150, Camaro. What's that on Nissan? What's that for? Yeah, that's a Ford. Just scoping. You know, they have auction. Oh, that Jag got rims on it. And that thing nice. Oh, okay. oh they gonna auction that off. They gonna get some money for that bad boy and use it on this two hundred Yeah, buddy. <laughs> Rolling like a big shot. What's going on here? All, all different walks of life with these cars. Some of them are stolen vehicles, some of them are getaway vehicles used mm. in bank robberies. We got mm. homicide vehicles where people have died in these cars. Oh. We have these <laughs> Don't want on that. It? Don't want that. <laughs> Don't want no homicide vehicle. <laughs> Let me know if y'all had a detail to come get the blood out. <laughs> I need to know. That joint sit over here sitting on a flat. Vehicles for any number of criminal reasons, and we're storing them until they're no longer needed for the cr <laughs> criminal aspect. I do have people, like detectives, come in here and take additional photos and study. Like We have an entire crime scene unit. That the crime That's all the crime scene unit does. They're dedicated to assisting the detectives with their investigation. Back. Taking the photos, processing for fingerprints, doing bullet holes, doing bullet trajectory oh. to figure out where did these bu bullets come from. Oh. This is from a homicide Ooh. right here. This is from a double homicide, yeah. You guys took oh, this car geez. that's been shot how many times do we know? There are at least 60 bullet holes in this car. And the soda's still in there. Oh, it's, almost, wow. it's almost frozen in time a little bit once you guys retrieve it. So has the murderer been caught? We're not gonna talk about okay. that one. My bad. Right, and we can do so much more here in our controlled environment than out on the street. The stickers say, if it says B, it's blood. B for if blood. it says T, it's trajectory. So T wow. is for bullet hole, B is for blood. In addition to the vehicle seized from crime scenes, Lee County's car collection of their own rivals that of Jay Leno and Whistling wow. Diesel. And they're amphibious. I've seen all of you guys' toys on the land. What are some of the cool toys and gadgets you guys have here in the water? Well, we just got two new jet skis that we used this last weekend. Okay. And um, they help a lot with enforcement. And oh, shut up. Y'all using this toys. You know, that helps out a lot with them providing us with those additional assets. Okay. Like this boat, for instance, it's 30 33 feet, has a full cabin, protects us from the weather, has 900 horsepower, get us up to 60 plus miles an hour, get us around the county as quick as possible to respond to those search and rescue calls as needed. Can we see this boat go maximum speed? Yeah, we can do that and we'll try to do it here in a few minutes. Maybe we can race the drone. Yeah, we'll see who wins. <laughs> okay. All right, let's give it a rip. Let's see if our uh, DJI drone can keep up. We are witnessing a traffic stop in real time. We got some folks um, speeding a little too fast right now. How fast were they going? So it's a slow speed minimum way you can Ooh. use on full plane. We about to give them a speeding ticket or what? Uh, we'll see. All right, I said we spare them if I have any influence, but we do need to give them a little slap on the wrist here. I'm not the judge, jury, or executioner, but how you guys doing? He's gonna make. He's gonna be the judge, jury, and executioner. A lot of their job seems to be prevention and reduction of potential speeding accidents or bullshit that may happen on water or what. A lot of it's. Uh information and then also awareness to make sure people are really really well informed hey how you doing <laughs> i'm here with uh nick fernandez nick where are you from man miami florida you yeah. enjoying the waters today i love cape coral yeah. so unfortunately we stopped you two days after your birthday for allegedly speeding what are your thoughts on the lee county sheriff department lee county honestly they're very polite approach me with much respect i've been pulled over before on the water in miami florida it's much much better experience here <laughs> I was, it took me a while to find my my license but i didn't print it so okay. I couldn't I can't say anything bad about them. I've had nothing but good experiences. Wow. Lee County, hard but reasonable. Hey. I like that. Thanks guys. They were educated. He saw that there was a difference in how the other vessels around him were behaving. And that's why he started to slow down. He's like, there must be an issue here. We're still having this problem because of the past hurricane that the signage is not all the way up yet. So we have okay. definitely have grace with that. And we just wanted to make sure he understood his boating laws. But today was just a verbal warning. Everybody understood everything and now we're boating safe.
But if you push that line, you will get clapped. Just like me a couple days ago. Go subscribe to my Patreon for the extended cut of my time spent with Lee County and for early access to every video before it goes up on YouTube, including this one. Yo, shout out to Tyler. Another good video. Okay, the, the money might be going to where it needs to go. I wonder how the residents in the Ooh. county, feel, not the ones that's actually committing the crimes, yeah, yeah, but yeah, like yeah. the other, like, you know. Yeah, yeah, that's a good question. I though. wonder just how, like how that, you know, do they think that everything is actually helping? Are they feeling the effects of like you in a positive way? Like yeah. I would like to know that. Uh, that that is because you can make question. things look good, you know. True, you can, true. But, that. but yeah, but I would like to know. I that. think that's a good that's a good valid question though. Yeah. I think um, I think that's a that's a. I, I wish we did see that aspect of it, but mm -hmm. hey, you know. Yeah. You can only cover so much, man. True, true, true. But hey, y'all spell us up in the comments, man. Let us know y'all thoughts. Uh feel free to come in on, on some of the uh topics we we spoke on. Yeah. Let us know y'all thoughts and opinions down below. But until next time, y'all know how it go, man. I do go by the name DJ New Kid. This is We are we are.